Hey guys. <laughs> Sorry about timing. <laughs> hey guys, this is Ashley King of Horizon Esports, and I'm joined by Eriksson of TSM. After they look forward to playing in the finals of the loser break in and also have qualified for 2020 World Championship. Hey Eriksson, um, thanks for joining me. It's been a very, very intense last few weeks, but how have you been doing? How has TSM been doing? Uh, a little bit up and down, obviously. We had a pretty tough match against Golden Guardians getting 3 0 in the first match of playoffs. Um, so we kind of had to really buckle down and figure out how we could just get 3 0 like that. I didn't feel like we were that weak as a team, but I think we made some good adaptations and uh, have come back stronger and kind of progressively getting stronger throughout each playoff match. Because I do have to bring up the today series because the echoes of it still run around the League of Legends communities everywhere. You know, it was a very intense match. I also meant that TSM is going to Worlds. I remember you being very calm about the reaction of winning against C9, but how have you processed the victory afterwards? Uh, I don't really know. It's just very different circumstances and uh, I think everyone's goal was to make it the Worlds, but then I also had to be like, oh wait, we still have a chance to win NA as well. So that's kind of, we had to refocus and be like, oh wait, okay, we made it to Worlds, but we still need to finish, you know, what we've been practicing this whole split for in NA, which is in the final. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the circumstances are just very different being in quarantine, having to go to China and being quarantined. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll do being 14 days by myself in a hotel room, but I think I'll be okay. Aww. And um, yeah, I, I just hope that we can stack up against the international competition when we get there. Because like, you know, the Reddit, internet, everywhere, it was going crazy all around you, but you were super chill, like not much reaction and in the broadcast interview. Yeah, like, you know, there wasn't that much pressure. <laughs> but do you think that was actually the clutch factor that TSM and you particularly had? Because it is always difficult and perhaps even emotional to have a best of five and try to win the whole thing on a game five match? Mm. Yeah, I think I was able to be a lot calmer now than I kind of used to be. I think maybe because I'm growing older and also I am just, I'm a little bit healthier. I used to drink a lot of caffeine, so I would always have jitters and my heart pumping like crazy for every single match. But now I just drink a little bit of tea and I think I can stay a little bit more calm for the matches and not get overly hyped to the point where it's also hurting my play and my individual play, which is something that I noticed in the past. So uh, maybe I'm a little bit too calm. I did see at the end game screen when all my teammates are going crazy and I'm like, okay, that's good. We won. Now let's focus on the next match. But I've just always been very focused on like, okay, now we did this thing. What about the next thing? But I also don't want to be the guy who's never really happy or joyous and, and bringing down the mood of my teammates. So it's something I'm trying to be aware of that I'm not always the like negative Nancy in the team. Who looked the happiest after the Cloud9 match? Oh man. I think Broken Blade always gets really excited. He's just a person that gets really excited about things. I remember right after one, I went to grab a, a sip of my tea and he just came over and started shaking me and I thought I was gonna <laughs> spill the tea all over my keyboard. Um, yeah, he talked to me the week before about really wanting to make worlds and, and really wanting to make worlds with me uh, because I, I thought he played really well in the GGS series. He was really a player that stepped up in between the games and in the games. I mean, he was crushing Hanser in pretty much every game. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that I was able to, to take him there because he really deserves it. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, you made a few lifestyle as well as like, you know, perhaps psychological like changes in the last few years. And this is your first Worlds for the first time since the 2017 Worlds. And I really wanted to talk about what you perceive as your own growth between that time and now. How the player Bjergsen as well as the player Soren has changed. You know, you mentioned the lifestyle changes, but... Um, something bigger that changed going into this year was just my overall health, focusing on, on exercise, diet, uh, <clears throat> managing caffeine and those kinds of things, just to make myself a little bit more level-headed and able to have more energy. I think that the Bjergsen that went to Worlds in 2017 was pretty much just 
if I did well in the game, I would communicate a lot and I would kind of carry my team. And if I wasn't doing well, I would kind of shut down and get really down on myself and get really upset about maybe how I played or how other people played. But I think I can stay a little bit more level-headed now and contribute more even when I'm not the main carry in the game. Uh, so I think just overall better health and, and more mature as a person. Which is so difficult in esports, right? Because in esports, you know, I talk to Korean players who kind of proudly tell me they've been solo queuing until 7 a.m. I'm like, okay, good yeah. on you. But at the same time, can you do it for a long term? And I get that it does boost your performance in short term. But would you say that kind of approach also helped with your longevity? Because you've been a top tier, like you know, the top tier mid laner in NA for such a long time. Yeah, I think I talked about <clears throat> a little bit about this in interviews and stuff, but in 2018, I pretty much tried that kind of lifestyle where I was like, well, all the Asian teams are successful and all they do is grind. And I pretty much put everything aside, friends, family, hobbies, and I just tried to maximize how many solo queue games can I get every single day and how many VODs can I watch and how much can I sacrifice sleep to the point where I'm not like, losing my mind or overly tired. But it just didn't really work for me. It, <clears throat> I felt like my mood was just really based on how well we did in that scrim day or each match. And I didn't really have this calm center that I can kind of return to where I feel like I play much better. So I really respected that works for others. I saw Doinby said that he was sleeping like four hours because he was just up watching VODs when their team started doing poorly. It just doesn't really work for me. And that's just a process of being a professional player, right? Is experimenting with all these different things that you see other people doing and figuring out kind of what works the best for you and your body. Uh, it's really, really like, you know, glad to, for me to hear that you've just found a good balance between your professional life and also like, you know, working life balance. But going back to the game, um, again, you've been, you had a, such a longevity in the NA scene. Um, and a lot of players who've been playing for a long time tell me about like, you know, having to put in like an extra attention or focus to stay competitive or be motivated. But what gets you up in the morning? Like what gets you to do solo queue? What gets you to, you know, be excited for your next match? Hmm. I think I'm kind of lucky playing mid lane because mid lane is just a lot of fun and there's mm -hmm. so many champions you can play. So I'm almost always excited to play solo queue and try out a new build or try out a new champion or, mm -hmm de recraft something. I know a lot of veterans, they don't really put in too much effort in the beginning or the middle of the season and they kind of start ramping it up for playoffs. Maybe because they don't enjoy the game as much, but I just enjoy the game most of the time and I enjoy playing and I really enjoy the feeling of the team really clicking and being on the same page and in the game, seeing the game in the same way, seeing the same opportunities at the same time and, and just really clicking. And that's just what I get a lot of meaning and fulfillment out of. So. It's not really too hard to put in a lot of work uh, because I just I just enjoy the day to day of being a pro player. I talk when I work as an interviewer for several regions. Um, I talk to so many like intense personalities. Like for example, I talk to Nuguri, who's just like you know happy about every victory he has. It's like yeah, I did that like you know level fifty like level 15 tower dive and I killed three people and I got so excited and he just like lives with this day by day game. And then on the other side, I talked to Deft who is also working very hard on his games, but he just tells me all year long, every single game, I look towards the worlds and that's my focal point. So in between those two extremes, where would you place yourself, Bjergsen? Like, you know, that long-term goal of like, you know, LCS or worlds or like, you know, game by game basis. Hmm. I think more on the game by game basis because in the past I had that vision of of worlds, but then I didn't make worlds twice, I believe. So I was kind of like, okay, now I just need to take it step by step and make sure that we're doing well every week and that we can even make it to worlds and make it to playoffs and make it to finals again. And I think also just a big focus for me has been enjoying my week to week life as a pro player and practice as a pro player because it's really easy to just be like sacrificing how you feel now to potentially get the worlds. But I've noticed it really leads to burnout if I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I'm really miserable right now, but I'm just going to put all these hours in. And if we make worlds, it's all going to be worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to focus on kind of sustained enjoyment of my work 
and enjoyment of, of being in a team and being with these guys and spending time with them. And that approach did lead you to Wales because again, congratulations on qualifying to 2020 Wales. And in the broadcast interview again, you mentioned that you wanted to see how you stack up against um, international mid laners. Um, and I guess there are a lot of players around the world who is happy to see you back at Wells. Um, is there like a particular team or perhaps a player, could be a mid laner, could be someone else that you are excited to face? Um, I think a lot of the really aggressive early game teams, like when I watched the LPL final, uh, I would really like to just play in those games because it just looks like a lot of fun playing in those matches where they're contesting every single thing on the map, and there's a lot of fights, and both teams are opting into these fights, and it really just comes down to a strong mechanical skill. Uh, I think some of the things that I do, like picking Zillion into Lucian against C9, is just not going to work against those teams because they're going to make you fight for every little thing on the map. And a champion like Zillion is not that strong early game to really do that. So whether that's going to be in a match or a scrim, uh, I think that that's a game that I would just really enjoy playing in, and, and so I would like to play against those really high progressive early game teams. Mm -hmm. I have to ask, what are some particular mid laners that you might be interested to face? Um, because I know there's several other mid laners might have um, quoted you. Like, last time we talked at Biff Rivals, you mentioned BDD. Um, in test, obviously, Knight is a very hyped up um, LPL player, and everyone's talking about Showmaker, and oh yeah, finally, the Scrim Showmaker is showing up on stage. So. If any player pops up in your mind, I'd love to hear it. Honestly, all of those players. Uh, I think Knight has been playing really well. I watched him play Lucian, and his Lucian team fighting was a lot better than mine. And Knight has really improved since watching him play. Uh, Shoemaker has been playing super well this split in this year. I was really happy to see BD playing Zillion after I played it. Uh, I haven't talked to him about it, but it's just uh, nice seeing other people play this champion that I've been one of the only players to play for a long time. and. I think I believe he was playing it either last split or last year as well with pretty good success. So, yeah, not really one player that stands out, but I just kind of want to play against all of them, honestly. Okay, I'll be really look, looking forward to 2020 Wells, and thank you so much for this interview. Um, one last question: So TSM will be heading to Wells, but some players may not necessarily make it to Wells. For example. I remember talking to Sven at C9 earlier in the split, and he told me how much Worlds meant to him, and he won't be there at World stage. And I watched it LPL, FPX and IG just dropped out. And so many players came so close to playing at the international match, but didn't make it. Um, do you have anything to say to those players? Because perhaps you've been there before. Oh, man. Yeah, I think... Hearing that just makes it feel like even more of a privilege to be able to go and to be able to play. And more grateful that we were able to make it. I don't think anything I really say is going to make them feel better because I know that it just sucks and it really hurts watching Worlds when you're so close to making it. I think I've been one game off of making Worlds maybe the last two years, or at least last year we were just one game off of making it. We got reverse swept actually. Um, yeah, I think it's just about setting your sights forward and, and looking at what you can do next year to kind of do better and make it there. It can be really painful to watch those international competitions when you feel like you should be there or maybe you were performing well enough to be there, but just things didn't click out or um, you just didn't perform well on that specific match. So yeah, it hurts. Just um, reflect on your season and, and see what you can do to make it back next year.